everyone and thanks for joining us. My name is Hannah Heron. I'm a sophomore at Westfield State and I'm a student athlete and I compete in cross country and indoor track and field. I'm also on the women's lacrosse team. I'm a communications major and I'm happy to welcome two relatively recent alumni for a conversation about Westfield State athletics and their experiences as student athletes. So I'm joined by Rachel Cardin, who's from the class of 2013 and Jesse Cardin from the class of 2018. Both Rachel and Jesse were standout cross country and track and field student athletes. And as many of you have guessed by their common last name, they are sisters. So welcome to you both. Awesome, great to be here. We love it. Happy to be here. Yes, awesome. Okay, so both of you were high performers as student athletes and you both seem to have jumped right into successful careers. Um, and you were part of kind of the more popular majors, I would say at Westfield. So um, yeah, maybe you could tell us a little bit about that. Rachel, you're also a comm major in, in poli sci too, right? Yes, so I was a communications political science double major. I ran cross country indoor and outdoor track. So very busy schedule at Westfield. Um, after graduating, I had some great internship opportunities thanks to my professors at Westfield. And then I got my first job in television news in West Virginia. I was there for about a year, moved to North Carolina, um, just kept advancing, eventually ended up in Virginia Beach where I became an anchor and reporter. And now I work in Baltimore and I am the weekend anchor, a sports girl and the crime reporter here. Oh, wow. That's She's famous. Quite a variety <laughs> of things. Quite a variety. A lot of jumping around, but it all starts with a good foundation. And I definitely got that at Westfield. And I would say that being a student athlete, you learn so much that you use in your life and you don't realize it until, you know, te teamwork, leadership, motivation, time management, all that stuff that comes with being a student athlete really helps you in your in your overall career. And I would say that Jesse probably feels the same way. Definitely. Yeah. Yeah, so Jesse, what about you? You were a, um, you were a uh, elementary ed major, is that you? Yeah, so um, I majored in um, elementary ed and I have a concentration in math. Um, so after graduating, I actually accepted a position while I was student teaching um, at a school in Holyoke. Um, so I was really grateful to like my professors and just the ed department because they specifically chose people, especially seniors and juniors um, that are starting their student teaching journey um, in these very diverse uh, kind of inner city schools. So we can really see, um, you know, if we didn't come from a school like that, then we're able to experience, you know, what students are going through every single day that might live in Springfield or that might live in Holyoke. Um, so I was at a school in Holyoke and I was offered a position there, which I took. Um, I taught there for a year and I learned so much um, about what it is to be a teacher. And like Rachel had mentioned, you know, when you are teaching, it's a lot of teamwork, um, you know, with your coworkers. It's a lot of taking leadership with your students and um, just being able to exercise your voice and not just what you learn, you know, at Westfield with your team, but also what you're learning just like by, you know, growing up and just being able to become a professional, you know, going from being a college student to being a real adult in the world. Um, so I taught there for a year and then um, I ended up moving to uh, a position as a fourth grade teacher in Munson um, where I'm teaching math and I love it. Um, and this will be my second year there. So I'm currently in my third year of teaching and Obviously this year has been a lot different than the past two years teaching remotely, but I still love what I do and um, enjoy going to work every day to see my kids, so. Oh, that's awesome. I'm glad to hear that you both are very content with where you are at with your careers. And it sounds like you guys have been very successful, but not only were you successful in your careers right now, but you were back then in college too. So Jesse, you were the first ever four time MASCAC women's cross country champion, and you earned a total of three All America honors in both cross country and track. And like you, Rachel, you were named MASCAC's NCAA Women of the Year nominee, and then you earned the MASCAC Female Scholar of Athlete of the Year honor and was named one of Massachusetts 29 who, sh who shine and earned Google Cloud Academic All-America honors in cross country. So I feel like maybe your successes from college and like 
your habits and stuff definitely carried over to help get you to where you are today would you say so like did you have any um maybe coaches or diff different like habits that helped you uh become successful during that time and throughout now too um man i feel like i wish i could write this down um <laughs> Um, you know, I guess when thinking about all of my time at Westfield and all of those accolades, you know, as you were mentioning them, I feel like I had different kind of snippets going through my head, different memories, you know, in oh, Stanley yeah. Park and um, on the track, you know, for the Jerry Gravel Invitational. And it feels very recent. And, um, you know, I guess when I think about what what helped me when I was on the team and what helped me when I was in school to where I'm at today. Um, a lot of it had to do with consistency. Um, you know, that's like the key characteristic that I can think of in the classroom and out on the track and on the course that I feel like is something that I hold true to myself every day is just going out there and doing your best, whether it's getting up, making sure that you go for a run in the morning or, um, you know, staying up really late to make sure that you are doing everything you can for your job the next day just holding yourself accountable in every aspect of your life that's a really good answer yeah i feel like behind each of those awards is just very consistent successful habits that build up to that one big thing and then um now i'll bring it back to you rachel <laughs> so i'm gonna name off these ones too okay so we have um an academic all district selection and you were also rachel named the westfield state university female scholar athlete of the year as a senior and then an all conference performer in cross country and won the massachusetts state collegiate athletic conference individual titles in several middle distant events so it seems like you both have uh, got those awards up and the success going on for you so would you what would you say would put some like what what makes that for you like what are your habits and what do you think of when you look back at all those awards well um there's a lot of pride that comes with you know knowing that you left behind something that's bigger than yourself right so like big titles and big championships and knowing that my sister was going to be going there and, you know, leaving behind like good footsteps for her to follow in, even though she, you know, well surpassed that. It really all starts, I think, with like, we look for patterns. So we come from a household of very hardworking people. Like I don't ever see my dad sit down. I don't see my mom sit down. They're hard working to the core. My brothers are the same way. We were raised to be hard workers. And I think that that transitioned into every aspect of our lives. We clung to the hard workers on the team. So like we wanted to make the coach happy because we knew that the hard work we put in would benefit us in the long run. We wanted to be with the top runners on the team. Jesse ran with the boys a lot because you want to be as hardworking as you can. You know that that's what's going to get you success at the end of the day. You know what I'm saying? Like you can't always like buy success. You have to earn it. And yeah. I think that those patterns really transitioned well for me from my house to Westfield, from Westfield to living on my own at 22 in a state I'd never been to before. Um, and it transitions now into, you know, buying my first house and getting married and having a puppy. Like Congratulations. These hardworking, <laughs> you know, these hardworking things, I think, it just becomes um, kind of what you do. You know what I mean? So if, if yeah. someone it shouldn't be a surprise anymore that Rachel Carden works hard or that Jesse Carden works hard. You know what I mean? Because it's just something we've always done. And I think when it comes to looking back at all those successes, those were just really the building blocks. Like I wanted to make the people that helped me go to Westfield, you know, my parents who had to pay, help me pay for school and, you know, my, my teachers who looked up to me and wanted me to be in national honor society and wanted me to go and represent the school at different events. Like, I wanted to make those people proud. So I worked super hard to do that. And in the long run, it didn't hurt me at all. You know what I mean? It only benefited yeah. me. I think I have the same thoughts now with my job. I want to make my bosses happy. I want to work harder than anybody else so that if someone's going to get called to go cover a hurricane, it's going to be me. You know what I mean? And I think that, you know, a lot of student athletes, like I used to always I know that this is like an unpopular opinion, but people used to say like, you know, you're a student athlete. And I was like, I'm an athlete, student athlete. Like I 
do my athletic stuff all the time when it comes to like eating right, sleeping right, you know, not going out and partying, like all these things are like what I am. I am an athlete. I'm a student, of course, to make sure that I can still be an athlete. So I used to, you know, really kind of focus on school because if I didn't do well in school, I couldn't run or, you know what I mean? So, and I knew I wouldn't do well if I wasn't taking care of myself. Sometimes those are the toughest parts is like not necessarily the one race, but every practice that leads up to it. Yeah. And like the little things that you put in, like you said, like sleeping right, eating right, like just making sure that you're on top of everything and stuff. So that's important. And sticking, you know, sticking with the leaders, like when it comes to, you know, Coach Divine was way more than a coach for me. He was kind of like, he was like my life mentor. Like he was my life oh, yeah. coach. I came to him with everything. And Coach O'Brien, like I, I remember having so many like good conversations about life stuff with some of those guys and with my teachers, you know what I mean? And I would say that Westfield, like when I went to Westfield, when I toured all these campuses, I wasn't like sold on Westfield at first. And when I went, like my first year, I was just like, I couldn't imagine myself being anywhere else. This is where I'm yeah. going to be. This is where I'm going to progress. This is where I'm going to be challenged. This is where I'm going to grow. And this is where I'm going to become like a real adult. You know what I mean? And sure. it was because of all those people that helped me get to where I was when I graduated with like awards and whatever else that really helped me get to where I am today. Yeah, I think that's the beauty of the of the school is that we have so many supportive faculty and administrators and students too. Like everyone just kind of rubs off on each other in the best way possible. And that's why um, it's like, it's such a huge camaraderie, but also everyone has their individual um, thing going on for them too, which is really cool. Um, and everyone supports each other, which is great. Yeah. So Coach Devine, do you have any funny memories of him or Coach OB? Oh my gosh. So many. Uh, I, you guys can I both guess hop in on this like, for sure. I don't know. I want to hear it all. <laughs> I have to say when I like was this is the question that's been brewing in my head since I reviewed some of the questions we'd be kind of going through um and I I feel like my memories they were changing every day because I'm like oh maybe I want to talk about this one or maybe this one but I have to say his magic act is like by far my favorite one. Yeah. Na, 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 na. Yeah. <laughs> that's like my favorite one and I just when I saw recently that he did a video or something for Instagram and I think he put it up there it like made my week like I was like that is Coach Divine to a T he's just you know he's not all like Rachel mentioned he's not all running all the time he is a life coach and he's someone that inspired me to when I became a teacher to be a like life teacher for my kids and to talk Absolutely. about how running is not the end all be all and life is a race and you know all those metaphors that you have about how you know things that you learn on a team things that you learn with running you know how a race is that's how a job might be or that's how a you know a trial might be and just being able to kind of connect those two things um so that's he's just always like been hilarious and I miss I miss him a lot so he misses awesome. you he talks about you all the time <laughs> <laughs> oh good I'm glad I text him sometimes because we live so close to each other now so I'm like you know what oh, yeah might as well I might see him one day <laughs> when I'm just you probably him. will yeah yeah he's he was the one for me because I was originally recruited to just play lacrosse here and that was like my thing and then my coach coach p who's also awesome like another great example of someone who's just like above and beyond a coach and a mentor just like a great person too he he was like well let me get you in contact with um like one of the track coaches and he gets me in contact with um coach divine but i wasn't planning on doing cross country at all so i was like running the 400 and i just did kind of cross country in high school just to stay in shape for lacrosse or whatever but when he and i was going to be like oh like after he's I said, oh, yeah, I'm interested in track and stuff. And he was like, well, I'm cross country. Like, and that was when he was like, I'm not going to be doing track this year. <laughs> and I'm like, oh. He scooped you in. Yeah. So, <laughs> so it wasn't necessarily like the sport that got me like into, like that made me want to do cross country. Because honestly, I didn't. I was like, oh, my God, I signed up for this whole thing that like I did not mean to do. And now I'm not going to be able to balance it out. But 
when I tried it, like I just, something was telling me to try it and something was telling me to do it and I did it and it was Coach Devine and he was the one who really like, like it, he convinced me, he's like, this will be the best thing. It was as a first year student going into Westfield, like doing cross country and being an athlete, like was the best thing ever. And I made friends with people who I would probably not have normally been friends with and like, it's just, it's such an eye-opening experience and it teaches you a lot about yourself, like how to work hard in other areas too and mentally push you through things that might seem um, hard at first, but then like just take it as it comes. So it was really good and he definitely was great. So what about you, Rachel? Any, any fun memories with uh, Coach oh, Devon? So many. Well, first I wanna build off something you said about, you know, that you were nervous about doing like, you know, more than just lacrosse. Um, I would say that Westfield makes it really not easy, but they're very accommodating if you want to be a three season athlete. You know what I mean? Like when I first started, my mom, like I'm the oldest in my family and my mom was like, you're not going to be able to do three sports. Like it's going to be too much with working, with going to school, like it's just going to be too much. And it was not it wasn't overbearing. Like, yes, no, I had some all. early mornings and yeah, I had some late nights, but for the most part, my teachers were great. They, you know, as long as you go to school and you do your work, they're going to work with you if you've got to meet out of town or something. And I just thought that that was awesome because I have a lot of friends who went to, you know what I mean? Like maybe a, a bigger school or something and they had to pick a sport and maybe it wasn't their favorite, but it's the one they got their scholarship for or whatever it was, you yeah, know, absolutely. we got to do what we loved. Uh, when it comes to Coach Divine, my favorite memory, I actually have a picture of it. It was right before my um, distance medley relay team was trying to qualify for nationals. And I've been trying to go to nationals all four years. And in hindsight, I probably should have picked another event, but you know, whatever, we'll let that go. Um, <laughs> and I, you know, I was talking all week. I had a text chain with this girl. Carolyn Conley, her name's, we called her Puda, and um, we talked all week about what the splits needed to be, what they needed to be for us to go to nationals. Like, I had this, I was a psycho. Like, every day I would text her and be like, if so-and-so can run 64 and you can run, you know. And so I'm laying on the, like, the track, the indoor track with Coach Devine, me and my boyfriend at the time, Anthony Fasora, also a standout athlete. The three of us are kind of just like laying there and somebody got a picture of us laying there. And I still remember to this day, like what it felt like to bounce ideas off of Coach Devine, to talk to him about like, you know, I really want this. I really want to make this happen. And him telling me like, you can, you can make, you guys can make this happen. You just need, you know, this, this, and this to fall in place. Everyone needs to be healthy. You got to take care of yourself, blah, blah, blah. And, you know, we didn't end up making it to nationals. But I don't think I had, like, I was upset at first, but I just remember going back to that conversation and being like, we did what we could. We did the best we could. Yeah. That's all he wanted from us. He was still proud of us at the end of the day. Um, and, you know, those, those life talks with him were more important to me than anything else that he ever gave me. Like, yes, he gave me, he helped me change my whole running form. He helped me, you know, eat better, sleep better, like all these healthy habits that he helped me get into. But really what helped me the most was just like him listening, giving me some feedback. And also, you know, he was just, he used to have this, um, I don't think he does it anymore, but he used to have this cookout at his house at the beginning of the year. So we'd all come to school early for preseason. And then at the end of preseason, right before school starts, we would have this cookout at his house. And we'd swim in the lake, we'd have to do a long run, then we'd go swim in the lake all day. And we'd have like, you know, hot dogs and hamburgers or whatever it was at his yeah. house. And we had so much fun. The boys team, my junior and senior year, were just like crazy weird. You know how distance runner boys are. They're just like oh, a different yeah. type of Oh league. yeah, we all know. But they, are, <laughs> they were so fun and we had such a blast. And I just still have so many great memories from Coach's house. And me and him actually exchange, like we write to each other sometimes. And I keep all the letters that I have from him. He sent me like an old picture of us um, from oh. when I was like a junior. And I'm like, first of all, my God, I'm so pale. Second of all, like, why <laughs> do I look like a five-year-old? But I don't know. It's cute that he keeps that stuff, you know? He's, he's the best and makes everyone feel special, but also sees everyone as a special person and, like, knows exactly what to say and, like, is very, very supportive. I think, um, I think one of my favorite things that he does is, um, if anyone's ever late, and sometimes just me, he... <laughs> 
this like he'll start screaming at you in Vietnamese and like <laughs> <laughs> and it's joking but you really can't tell <laughs> right. but um but he's just he's a great he's a great person and I think we do so we do the cookout thing now but it's actually at Mr. Parker's house and he's this he's a great great awesome supporter and donor to the program for the cross country and track team and um I have a very similar memory up at his house unfortunately we can't do it this year because of covid but right. it's it's a, also a great time and i think the collaboration between the girls and boys team always brings um a certain yeah kind of i love that <laughs> i think that that's so unique about long yeah. distance running is that like there's so few of you really you know what i mean that you get to be so close and not for nothing like the boys and girls track team is the same way and a lot of that is because of coach o'brien and i don't know who the uh the jumping and the sprinting coaches are but when I was there like we had such a ball it was just like one big like group of kids like I felt like everyone was like my brother and sister you know yeah, and like um coach O'Brien had his own way of like being funny he has such like a dry sense of humor yeah but I appreciated it so much because he you know there were things that Jesse and I still laugh about that he used to say <laughs> anything that you can remember off the top of your head yes uh, can I say it in his voice? Because I can yeah, say it in his oh, voice. Absolutely. Um, my favorite is when he would say, hip turnover, Cardin, hip turnover. <laughs> like, as if, like, he's, he's like. Fast, but he would say it in such a slow way. You're like, well, how do you want me to do this? Like, I want to make you happy, OB, but tell me how. I, know. So, I think the OB impressions are always one that you can distinctly pick up in the hall. If you just hear someone talking like that, you're like, oh. Yep. <laughs> He was funny. And he has a soft spot in his heart for the oh, girls absolutely. team, like for oh, sure. Yeah. <laughs> I think that he, you know, he recruits all these boys and all these boys like join because of him and this and that. But when it comes to like where his heart is at, I think it's with the girls team. Yeah, he is. We bring the soft spot in him out. Yep, and then absolutely. Marley, Marley Coachberg, she is a very wonderful um, leader in actually the whole athletics department. She's like, she's up right up there with them with OB and Coach Devine has done so much for not only the um, track and cross country athletes, but the department as a whole. Mm -hmm. um, so she's be she's becoming like one of those kind of like iconic coach figures too, and has also made everyone feel very special in that way. So I think between um, all of those coaches in the track department, it's been great. And like my coach for lacrosse, Coach Petulis, is like great so for all coaches and faculty here um it they're just they're the best you know and they definitely are like the cherry on top to everything else that Westfield has to offer um so what's your best piece of advice um to people like me who are a student athlete at Westfield State the biggest piece of advice I would give them is to take every opportunity take yes. every opportunity even if that means that you have to get up you know, two hours before your first class, or, you know, if you have to work something on the weekend, or if you have to take a trip instead of go on spring break, like take those opportunities because they're there. And once you graduate, they're not as plentiful as you think they're going to be. So I would say that that's my biggest piece of advice, like multiple years instead of going, I mean, not that I could ever go on spring break anyway, but I would either work or I would do an internship. And those internships is what absolutely 100% got me where I am today. And, you know, there were times that I had to take classes Monday, Wednesday, Friday, so that Tuesdays, Thursdays, I could like work and do an evening internship. Worth it. 100% worth it. Just take every advantage that you can and talk to your teachers about it. I had a teacher, Professor Smales in um, political science. I don't know if he's still there. He was awesome. Yes. And he really, like, I took every single one of his classes every semester that I could because I knew that he was going to help me get, you know, internships and stuff lined up when I was like, you know, junior and senior. And he did. So I'm glad that I like took advantage of those things. And even though, you know, I started taking more classes to the point that I could get two majors, it was worth it because I knew that the people that were there at Westfield were going to help me to live in the moment. Oh yeah. Um, that was something that I felt like I heard a lot when I was a freshman, especially from Rachel and all of her friends, because some of them still, some of them were overlap between us because we were one year apart. So when she graduated, a year went by, and then I came in as a freshman. Um, so I didn't get her on the team, but some people that were freshmen when she was like a senior, I had them as juniors and seniors. Um, 
And, you know, they would remind me, you know, when you're a freshman, like you don't realize like how amazing this is going to be. And you don't realize how quickly time's going to go by and all this other stuff. And I guess I just kind of listened to them, but I didn't really take that in, especially since as a freshman, you feel like you have so much going on and you're really starting to adjust. Um, and it wasn't really until like my sophomore year, which is when I first went to nationals and I learned about what nationals was. And that became my goal, obviously, from then on. But you know, just, I still remember to this day, like being on the course in Winnicone, Wisconsin, it was 28 degrees out, it was snowing, I hadn't run yet, like just these little memories that I still have with me because they were such lifetime experiences. And Absolutely. after that, time, yeah, after that time going for cross country and just kind of feeling like I had a breakout season, I was like, I really want more of that. I, I crave more of that. And not just on the national level, but, you know, mass cap titles and, right. um, you know, being able to really come together as a team. And there are just those moments that you can never, ever get back. You know, um, you can be on a team outside of college and you can be on a team, um, you know, doing something else that you have always wanted to do outside of college. There are other opportunities once you graduate, but when you're in college, there are just some things you'll never get back. So I guess that would be my advice is really soak in every moment even the moments that really stink like you know late night papers and having to go from 7 a.m to 11 or 12 at night and it can be really hard and um but it's also something that again you just you're gonna miss when you when you graduate um yeah, miss yeah. That. that's awesome and like I think it really says something about the school for you to look back and miss it but and really appreciate it but also feel very content and happy where where it put you in life too mm -hmm. because that means I think that Westfield did its job for sure and also yeah. really um basically had some awesome and fantastic successful student athletes there for sure and like things honestly here compared to what you were saying haven't changed much in the best of in the best in the best way possible not like in like a bad way <laughs> like they've good the trends and um the atmosphere is very supportive and the same I mean the people that you're naming are most of them are still here I think every single person that you named is still here so that's also very telling um because it's just it's a wonderful place to be and I'm so happy to hear that you guys um feel so like special about Westfield and I think that's really cool. I'd like to encourage you both and any alumni watching this to register and participate in the OWL Run, a virtual 5k run this homecoming weekend. The details are available at www.westfieldalumni.org. Rachel and Jesse, thank you both for spending some time with me today and sharing your experiences as student athletes at Westfield State and how it prepared you for your careers today. Thank you so much. It was a pleasure. Happy to join.